America strings its words together neatly. It is hiding something big. The checkout girl says she can't quit smoking. She'd have nothing else to do. America instigator of the dream. In my mind, my body aches. Next song is called Water Cuts My Hands. It's about uh, situations as a woman when I may be talking to a man and I think we're just talking as human beings, but suddenly I realize it's not the case. It's a man and a woman talking and there are certain uh, presumptions made about that state. Water Cuts My Hands. <laughs> called The Dog. It's about uh, a certain set of psychological thoughts that you might have that kind of chase after your uh, more surface level type of thinking, if you all know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you. 
folks that uh, are sitting around watching TV instead of listening to the radio. Oh no, it's called Blue Limbo evidently tonight. And uh, this is on our upcoming K-release LP out at the end of January called Calico Kills the Cat. Blue TV. <laughs> Now I'm not certain A blue light shines behind the curtain It's not erotic and it's not alive Blue TV flashes all those lights do 
one more here, then we're going to take a little break. And this one is called Dead Bird's Feet. And obviously, from that title, you can gather that it's a song about uh, truth, the illusion of truth, the illusion of right and wrong. <laughs> You just like popped in and you just drove down here from Vancouver today, to, just for the show. I, I'm honored. I feel honored that. Uh, well, hey, why not? That the Boy Meets Girl show is so important in your in your in your uh, appointment book. Or otherwise, we'd be lost. Yeah. <clears throat> we really did come all the way down here just to, to play this show. Oh, I got a note here for Pablo. Remember, remember Pablo? Remember Pablo, right? Indian Welk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently, some people were trying to get a hold of him on the phone, but he wasn't in. So, made him a little note. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, you guys have been away. I mean, you haven't been in Olympia for almost a year. No, nope, about a year. When was the last time you played in Olympia? I can't remember. Uh, we did the show out here last January. Did you do Donna's radio show after that? No, that was it. January. When did you do Donna's radio show? January. I thought, January. We, I thought we did it when we recorded an album and we came and did uh, that. Was and that January. was in January. Yeah, January. but the show you did out here was in November. Oh, where? Oh, yeah, yeah, we played live out here. Right. Now I remember. Oh, at the college, yeah. We played the college. The Evergreen. Yeah. The Evergreen State well, I'm glad College. We got, I'm glad we got that straight, okay? Yeah. But, uh, what was the... So what's, uh, been, huh? should I interview you? <laughs> these so long what have you pauses, been doing? These long what have you been doing for you? I, I'm trying so, to get, Calvin, what have you been doing? Have been How's been been Pete been Hoffman going? You guys went on some huge tour. Like, you, you went away for a month, and it ended up being, like, six months or something, right? Yep, it turned out that way for me. I ended up staying over in England for about five months. Just but wait, before you went to England, you yeah. like, all the way across oh, Canada, yeah, Black Wedge stuff, tour? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, we play back east in Canada and back east for the first time in the U.S. of A. And that yeah, went down play there? well. We went down to Boston, New York City, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Washington. Yeah. And then we headed over to London. We played with uh, Poison Girls there, which was a big thrill for us. Is that kind of depressing, though? They have about three million records and nobody cares about them. I care about them. You know, lots of people that care about them. Yeah, it's an unfortunate thing that... Uh, so you'd say it's not depressing. <laughs> <laughs> not depressing. Is that I was not say? depressed. I okay. was elated. All right. Great. No, so there I was. So what's this about them having a house and they keep selling off all their record collection to, to like put No, they the keep album? selling off little bits of their garden. It keeps getting shorter and shorter every year. They, they have a neighbor who keeps buying a little chunk of it every yeah, year I and they so. put out another record? I guess so. They seem happy. I mean, you know, they're still doing stuff. Vi's doing some poetry reading type things and they have this duo, her and Richard. They do stuff. They play guitar. Yeah. yeah. So that was good to meet them and met lots of other interesting people over there. In fact, we met you over there, Calvin. Oh, yeah, we That's met right. we you over there. That's right. We played a gig with you. Um, I forgot about that. The Rough yeah. Trade Record Store, yeah. That was a wild we one. forgot about that one. Yeah, that was a wild one. Yes, sir. Yeah. But then, and then, and then what? That was your last show, the tour, and that was six months ago. Yeah, I stayed over there, wrote a bunch of stuff, did some solo reading. Uh-huh. And that was kind of interesting. I had this kind of feeling like maybe I'd uh, become a uh, poet. <clears throat> there, but then uh, they turns out, out of it. No, it was more. It was more just like uh, wanting to try something different. So uh, I did that, but it wasn't nearly as exciting as uh-huh. as working with a group of people in the black wedge stuff or working with Dave. And I and I do like to sing. You know, if you're a uh-huh. poet, it, you can get fairly dramatic. But it's a bit much to just kind of stand up there and sing all these songs out with no music. Well, let's go back. Tell us about the black wedge. Black Wedge, uh, well, Dave and I uh, were the Black Wedge this year uh-huh. in the uh, U.S. and Canada. And uh, then we met up with Peter Plate, Peter Plate Poet from mm-hmm. San Francisco. And uh, we toured around with him, we did the cabaret scene over there. In England? Yeah, about 15 shows over there. And now we're organizing another Black Wedge tour for this spring with a guy from England and Peter Plate and ourselves. So it'll be Canada, US, and England represented, and we'll be in all three countries again this summer. So who summer. originated the, the Black Wedge? Dave and I, and with an activism mm-hmm. from Montreal. And the Black Wedge has been mm-hmm. and will be, again, groups of people getting together to uh, perform music and poetry who kind of have the same ideas about uh, certain social problems that we all have to face. Mm-hmm. You know, sexism, the uh, whole sort of capitalist system, work ethic, all those kind of things that I keep moaning on about. How did that go over in the old world? Well, I think they are fairly entrenched in Thatcherism. You know, they've been uh, fairly repressed for uh, like 12 years at this point and uh, they kind of uh, are a bit apathetic really and I think also as a people they're fairly reserved I don't mm-hmm. know what you found playing over there but they didn't tend to feel much empathy that we could notice you know so you don't always know what kind of an impact you're making because nobody says too much of anything mm-hmm. Did you run into people that knew about you through Black Wedge or through... Uh, here and there. And yeah, like Boys and Girls had heard of us and uh, were you know, happy to meet us. We, they sort of have a similar political outlook. Uh-huh. You know, feminist, anarchist, uh, political bias to a lot of their material. And uh, then some friends passed through too. We were just on tour also and... I think we made a certain amount of impact. I don't know, it's always kind of hard to judge these <clears> things, you know. Who you talk to, who you perform in front of, what they take away from it may not be something that you're aware of at the time, or they're even aware of. But, you know, I think it was a worthwhile thing to do, to bring over ideas from our side and just communicating. I think one of the problems I ended up having a bit was... Uh, I kept trying to tailor my ideas for what they already knew, trying to sort of second-guess what types of things they had experienced when I really didn't know their mm-hmm. situation. 
whereas I think I should have just gone over and said, this is what I know about Canada mm -hmm. and my situation there. And I think that would have been uh, a more uh, interesting approach to take for them. But I kept thinking, oh, I'm going to need to qualify this somehow, like us having a conservative government like you have, you know, conservative mm -hmm. government kind of comparing the two, where it's pretty hard to do that when you're in front of, uh, you know, people who actually live in the country full time, right? Also, it made me uh, think that, uh, that perhaps there's more hope in, uh, in North America as opposed to tired old uh, Europe, in the sense that in Britain it seemed like a lot of people are entrenched in supporting the Labour Party as a savior of uh, all their troubles. Uh -huh. and and they've been defeated about five times at the polls. And so this type of, you know, what we try and talk about is other issues, other ways of living life and other ways of looking at the world, whereas it seems like they feel their only hope is to stick with the, the party that they voted for all their lives. And it seems uh, really dreary and it seems really going nowhere. Well, that seems interesting because the black wedge is sort of patterned after the red wedge, which was mm -hmm. trying to the tour the Labour Party in power. Yeah. yeah. And repeatedly failed to. Well, I mean, the that. Labour Party, I wouldn't say that the Red Wedge necessarily failed in their task well, no, awareness but, but of it, the Labour Party. No, but if their intention was to elect them. I mean, mm -hmm. for sure, that to raise awareness, they should, certainly did that. But, um, you know, all the struggles over there, the miners' strike, uh, uh, various labour struggles that have been, uh, they've all been defeated by Thatcherism basically mm -hmm. every time. And, uh, and we, we were hoping that we could talk to people and and try to, you know, look at some different options, whereas people, you know, are pretty set in their ways. They have life history of supporting one party over another, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very divided. And I think in North America, there's uh, perhaps more optimism, more chance that people won't get stuck in this uh, kind of rut, mm -hmm. you know, putting all faith into electoral democracy. Well, didn't you get put, wasn't this tour, this English party tour arranged by Nick Talks? Mm -hmm. as, I mean, wasn't, wasn't he sort of in that kind of thing? So what's He's uh, an anarchist over there, and he... He's an anarchist over here, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when he's, whatever country he's on, Iceland. Um, Although he does drink more when he's over here than at home. Boy, does he drink, yeah. Um, yeah, so he, he, was, he was an anarchist, but a very, he was active in different struggles, mm -hmm. like uh, gypsies and stuff like that, they get harassed a lot, and so in his local area, that's what he, one of the things he was concerned with, and uh, he's a very active person. And talked about a lot of different issues when he was performing. Did mm -hmm. you perform a lot? A number of times. Mm -hmm. We'd actually done a tour with him in Canada, so we kind of already had made that connection and you know, knew what he uh -huh. was all about. So he toured here, and then he brought us over there. Well, didn't he get you hooked up into some sort of, I mean, weren't you being funded by Poetry Council? Actually, no. funding for uh, poetry from the National Poetry Secretariat over there. Like, they'll give you about 50 quid, which is about 100 bucks, to do just a poetry reading. Uh, was that what Mechanol was? No, I didn't, when I was doing solo readings. And then when we were doing uh, a duo performance, it would be like 150 quid, which is like 300 bucks for like 20 minutes. You know, so it was fairly lucrative. It actually, oh, good yeah, and the distances are short, so it's not all that expensive to get from place to place. So pretty much all of the shows you set up were under that program, or did you yeah. have other ones? Yeah, huh. yeah. That's fascinating. So what do you think of I all think that stuff? Like all all that stuff's new stuff. Mm -hmm. I like that are one you where you do the little the little thing diddly diddly. Mm -hmm. Dead bird's feet. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. And most of the time I was eating those crackers. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, you kept looking at your watch, weren't you? <laughs> well, I, was, my, I, was so, I was so fascinated by this book I'm reading, I, yeah. I couldn't possibly. But I wanted to ask you about that, that poetry secretary thing. Is that, it seems like there's a million bands over there, and there's millions of people doing this kind of stuff. And I didn't really what get What kind it. of stuff are you talking like, about? Like band stuff. What? Trying to be a rock band. Yeah. That and it seems like a lot of people aren't smart enough to figure out they could just they could call themselves a band sometimes and a poetry duo another time. I mean, is there? I didn't get well, any I kind of sense some... that there was this kind of backing for artistic. No one, everyone seemed to be in dire just like depression. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe people don't know about it, or maybe because we were from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have to be qualified in some way? Oh, we. I'm we've, sure that our this, promoter this probably you know, presented us in a, a reasonable way. You mm -hmm. know, 
as being worth bringing into the country and uh, worth supporting on our You don't even English and they're getting this money. Yeah, but I think it's, you know, valid and valuable to bring people in from elsewhere to perform. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their criteria is for other people, Mm -hmm. really. Yeah, it just seems like programs like that, and, and at least around here, you've got to... Yeah. You get state money, you've got to already prove that well, you're, you're, listen, you you're know, a you professional, guys, you you've guys, got to be local. You, you guys gotta, in America think you've got it so great, you know. Mm-hmm. Over there, I mean, their, so, the welfare state is being eroded rapidly. I mean, mm-hmm. that's Thatcher's you know, main drive is to uh, cut back as much as possible. But they have a national health service. They have mm-hmm. a dental program where you can get you know, your teeth fixed for five or ten bucks. Uh, they've got unemployment insurance, mm-hmm. they've got, uh, you know, welfare for people who aren't working. You know, like, they actually have a system that compensates for the fact that they're not uh, producing enough to support everybody within a, a, a job situation. You know, on the other side of the... Well, they, they certainly drive that point home at every opportunity. I mean, I was every time I turned on the TV, there was something about how horrible America was. You know, and they might be having a documentary on the British public health, mm-hmm. but the whole point was, well, it may be bad here, but thank God this is in America, where you yeah. have people dying in hospital Jeez, rooms. Jeez, that's not really the impression I got, and most I people I talked to, they just thought Canada and the U.S. were just like a land of absolute the, bliss the and, TV and news glory. The news was constantly about how, how, mm. how better England mm. was than America. Mm. Every, every, every story mm. that was even about England was So slanted. what did you think of it? Did you think I never, it was, I never, I mean, would you care I to never make a to to better, worse kind of. sort of thing? My sister thinks it's pretty cool. She's yeah. there. She likes it. Mm. You know, on the other hand, like... Um, but she complains about the fact that there might be an election in France or, or Germany that might sound interesting, and there's never a thing about it on the news, but the smallest thing in America gets 15 mm. minutes. Mm. And she can't, you know, can't find anything out about news in, in Europe at all. She's just so obsessed with the U.S. there. Although, of course, what happens in the U.S. affects them mm-hmm. pretty heavily. Yeah, I, I definitely got a lot of that by watching their, their mm. TV and talking to people like America is bad, all these bad things. Mm-hmm. I, I expected, oh, America, what the greatest place in the world, but you know, I, didn't, I never heard any of that kind of stuff. Mm. Well, there you go. I mean, it's pretty hard to make any kind of generalizations about another country, isn't it? Just Especially when you're only there for a couple of weeks, or even a couple of months. I guess. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it just depends on the individuals you end up meeting. They seem to take offense pretty quickly when you start putting their country down, though. Like, people seem depressed there and violent. Uh-huh. You know, like, uh, Friday and Saturday night, it's just you go out to the pub, get absolutely plastered, and uh, pick a fight. So that's, that's how it works. I mean, I shouldn't say that. That's pretty condemning, isn't it? But, well, if that's what you did, Gene, that's what you did. <laughs> I, we're not putting you down or anything. <laughs> you want to step outside, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's interesting. I forgot what we were talking about. Something interesting. Right there. Well, you sent me this poster. It's like this beautiful color, yeah. heavy paper, thick stock poster with a, yeah. a painting and your poem and your little photo that makes you look it's like nice, you're about I... 40. And, <laughs> and uh, the, I mean, it makes you look very distinguished. <laughs> and a little biography as if, you, as if you were some really important poet. I mean, do they do that to everybody over there? What's, what's, what is that? Uh... What's it all about? Did you have books published while you were over there, or what? I had some stuff published, yeah. In what kind of? In uh, didn't I send you one of those smart nuts? Yeah. Yeah. But you didn't. Well, that's you just shouldn't run down to Kinkos and do that yourself. No, no, the, the council <laughs> published that too. <laughs> wow, you're just rolling in the dough. Over there. What, <laughs> yeah. Why did you come back? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I hung around. The, you know, my visa was going to expire, and hey, you know, we had to get back on track here with Mecha Normal. Start mm-hmm. making some records. And going on tour and all that kind of thing. So, so it was there? it was a worthwhile uh, endeavor to sit around in a room and write for about five months. And uh, I went to a poetry workshop and I also uh, led a women's writing workshop. Mm-hmm. And this was all through the council. Yeah. Again, you know, they give you money. Did, for it, these did things. it occur to you like, hey, I'm doing this. Why aren't these people here in England doing this? Doing what? I mean, what? Taking advantage of these programs. Well, right? they are. Mm-hmm. Some people are. I mean, that's the big deal. Nobody will take a step in the, in the direction of being creative unless they get funding for it. 
Hmm. You know, if, if you're starting up a theater company or whatever, the first thing you do is go and uh, submit a proposal to the council. And if there's some valid reason for giving you money, they will. If they have it, I mean, it depends mm -hmm. on who's, who's budgeting what. It, it seems that there are a lot of interesting dilemmas in that situation where you have a, a welfare state situation where a lot of grant money and money is available to people. And then those people, it, that, going over there and talking to these people and they sort of say, well, yeah, we get all these, you know, this money here and there and grant money and stuff like that. Um, but they have a million complaints about it all and some valid complaints, I'm, I'm sure, mm -hmm. you like know, what? but, uh, well, abuses the, or, or not getting, well, that everyone can't be funded, I suppose, is one thing. And also that people who maybe they consider aren't warranted get uh -huh. easily funded. Mm -hmm. And then you just have a massive a bunch of junk just sort of yeah. in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a place like, uh, I think America is that it's, you know, it's basically a free enterprise, private enterprise sort of situation. And, you know, I guess uh, sometimes I, th I think Gene and I, we, we try to do what we can outside of, you know, getting government help and that sort of thing mm -hmm. to try and just sort of do it regardless. Like, rather than sort of go, well, we didn't get any money from the government, we can't do anything. Right. Instead, we go ahead anyway and do what we want to do. Right. Uh, regardless. Uh, I mean, you have and, in your own mind what you want to do, and yeah. if you get support yeah. from the government, great. If not, you know. And we don't yeah. consider whether or not it's going to be commercially viable either, mm -hmm. as you may have gathered <laughs> from that I last gathered. little set there. <laughs> but uh, I, the only, when I was over there, the only people I came in contact with who were doing something creative. But they were doing it was more of sort of rock and roll bit, you know, mm -hmm. um, scene is they the only way they were getting support is they felt sort of you know in sort of a roundabout sort of not necessarily honest way, is that they there was there was money available, they would pay you a certain amount per week, a very small amount per week, if you were starting your own business. Right. As sort of a, a startup mm -hmm. thing. And for one year, mm -hmm. you know, you if they would they would fund your business. So they would use that to put out records and things like that, and then when one year was up, the funding would run out, and, mm. and that was the only way that their their creative endeavors were being supported by the government. And they, I mean, no one I knew was even considering going after the, you know grant money or, or money for doing it. That was specifically for, for mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Another scheme along those lines is the ET, the extraterrestrial scheme they have over there, where uh, the government will supply. Uh, business with uh, virtually free labor. Uh, people who are on the dole are kind of conscripted into working for uh, a small increase in their dole money with the uh, with the idea, the vision that they're going to learn this new trade, right? Mm -hmm. So they do that for about a year, basically working for about 20 bucks a week full time. You know, mm -hmm. the sort of, it's kind of perverse really taking people who, who really well, there aren't jobs ship, for. Yeah. Yeah, and, and putting them into some program that's just basically uh, cheap labor sort of thing. And uh, another another thing that was happening while I was over there, there were some bills going through that prevented uh, uh, homosexuality as being portrayed as a positive thing in any kind of art form, in a, uh, like a theatrical performance. As or far as being public No, it was illegal. Anything. Really? to portray homosexuality as uh, a viable lifestyle or that it was pos uh, positive in any way. Or, or even if you talked about, uh, you know, uh, Oscar Wilde or, or some, Somerset Mom or, or something like that, e even if you recommended them as writers or as, uh, as useful people, you know, artistically, that that could be construed as promoting homosexuality. And so, so that was, a, you know, a real contentious issue so, over there. I, see. I think they, they may have found ways around that, but that was all That's coming up through the house while I was there, and then there were certain... It wasn't passed. It was, actually, but there were certain sections of it that were questionable that made it so that people could look at it a different way and, and go ahead with it. Uh, Clause 28, there's was, was quite, a, quite a bit of uh, action around that. Yeah, there's even, uh, when I was in Holland, there was a lot of, uh, there was even demonstrations there to show... So international outrage about it. And the other thing that uh, just before I left uh, was passed was uh, basically any uh, reference to the IRA or from the IRA was uh, censored in the media. 
So in a certain way, it puts the IRA underground. Mm -hmm. you know, nothing can really uh, be said about them. Hmm. Were you aware of that, Dave, that whole, that whole issue? Uh, well, just what I read in the paper. And one uh, recent example was the Pogue's latest single was banned in Britain because it talked about some convicted IRA members and claimed that they were uh, wrongly uh, uh, convicted by a torture. And uh, that was not allowed on the airwaves. So all of these countries, like in Canada, well, in Canada we can swear on the airwaves. In the U.S. we cannot. Uh, and in Britain, you cannot promote homosexuality or the IRA on the air. Can you do that in Canada? Oh, yeah. Canada, I mean, I'm not saying, oh, so, yeah, I mean, we're so glorious. So, about the only free. thing you can't do there is like um, bomb porno shops or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they frown on that. <laughs> well, some people do. Uh, in in uh, British Columbia, where we come from, we have uh, a, a premier who's like the, the, would be the equivalent of the governor here, and he recently made a statement comparing himself to Jesus Christ and said that if Jesus were around today, he'd be really low in the polls too because this government official is is at the lowest ever. So it's the guy who has the little... Yeah, fantasy gardens, yeah. Yeah. And so he's uh, he, he was talking to a U.S.-based uh, Christian group and he made this speech and it was videotaped and, and distributed to Christian organizations about how to influence Christian thought in government. Hmm. And... Uh, I mean, let a, I mean, no mention that there are other religions in the world, but just Christian uh, religions. And uh, he was widely condemned by religious groups because he's probably the most unchristian person there is. He's constantly uh, uh, trying to berate the poor and cutting welfare rates. And it's, he's just a, a nutter, basically. It's the same in Blighty. Fascinating. Yes, I, I didn't believe you when we drove by that. And you said that that's where the governor lives. Right? It's the governor's mansion, yeah. So if anybody has any uh, ideas or comments, criticism on these songs I just sang, or the ones I'm about to sing, uh, you know, phone on in and... Uh, yeah, if they want to talk to you guys. Come yeah. on the air, let them fire away. Because we're about to record most of these tomorrow, and most of them are really new. So if anybody... Oh, yeah. uh, like uh, a couple of days, some of them. Most of them were written in England. Well, let me just take this out. You say that you're listening to KAOS Olympia, non-commercial, listener-supported radio located at the Evergreen State College. But no swearing. The phone number is 866-6822. And, uh, yeah, so what? We'll play a couple of records here, and then we'll get back to you all um, rocking and rolling live here in chaos. So, uh... Yeah, let me think here. <laughs> no. Uh, the song we're going to record tomorrow is called Female. <laughs>
Fire, the song off the LP on K Records that's going to be released at the end of next month. And it's about uh, a certain attitude that men, some men and some women have about women, uh, how the way people talk about women, various stereotypes that are still in force, and uh, pornography, those types of things. A lot of things that I wish would go away. It's called Ancient Fire. <laughs> on with this song. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's about people that kind of make the decision that they're just going to try and make life easy for themselves, which uh, I guess is realistic, but I'm, I'm still idealistic about what people can do with their lives and what uh, people can create in the way of positive change. Uh, this is called Taking the Back Stairs. Across the summer 